Hi, welcome. Uh, my name is Ben Kickert, and the presentation that you've come to attend is OpenAI, GPT-3, and Wolfram. Uh, my primary responsibility during this uh, presentation is to introduce my, my co-host, the, the main presenter, Maureen Baer. Um, so without uh, further ado, I will turn it over to her. Um, she is joining us remotely and will be available for questions uh, when we get to that point. So thank you so much. Good afternoon. My name is Maureen Baer. I work with Ben Kickert and Kenneth Blake. I thought the conference was Zoom hybrid when I submitted to do the presentation, so I'm sorry I can't be with you in person in Champaign. Luckily, Ben is there and has agreed to manage the video of this presentation and help me answer questions. Today, I'll be telling you about our experiences over the past year in using OpenAI GPT-3 with Wolfram. But first, let me tell you about who we are what we do, and how we've been involved with Wolfram over the years. Starting Up Good is an initiative to support entrepreneurs, both nonprofit and for-profit, whose primary goal is to make positive change in the world. We have three core focuses. First, we search, gather, analyze, curate, and share information that we think can be useful for startups and impact investors. Second, we work directly with social entrepreneurs with emphasis on women and people of color to help them position themselves to get funding and investment for their work. And third, we pay attention to the sustainable development goals. Those are the global goals established by the United Nations to help the world tackle poverty climate, health, and other areas. Our emphasis is looking at how metrics are designed, used, and reported. Since the SDGs were started in 2015, we've been putting an emphasis on using Wolfram and the technology stack as the hub for organizing our work. Over the years, we've made 10 presentations to share what we've been doing with Wolfram. The presentations are representative, not comprehensive, and include tools for finding and analyzing potential impact investments, collecting, cleaning, and analyzing all kinds of public data from multiple sources, turning non-text media like PDFs, video, and images into computable data. Over the years, we found that Wolfram can do many, many of the things we need to do for our work, though of course not all. As we've expanded our toolkit, we've used the principle of try it first with Wolfram, keep Wolfram as the central organizing and orchestrating software, but don't be constrained. Since Wolfram plays nicely with other software, we choose the best tool for the job while making sure to use Wolfram where it's strongest. Lots of the information we want to use isn't in nice organized data format, whether it's social media, Conference YouTube recordings are long, badly formatted PDF reports. We found out that even with Ben's formidable data skills, the messy blobby info does not easily bend to algorithmic structure. Enter OpenAI GPT-3. Started by Sam Altman, Elon Musk, who's not currently active involved, now and others as a nonprofit, it's morphed into a for profit with costs for use and with Microsoft having a billion dollar exclusive license for access to the model. But it's open to use, easy to use, and has a decent API. And it's big. 
massive training content and parameters. It's updated regularly with more current information and better models. And it's fun. This is a screenshot of the OpenAI Playground. It's an online interface that lets anyone, as long as you're registered and pay for tokens, use their GPT-3 models. What you can do through the Playground is pretty deep and their documentation is good. I encourage playing to see for yourself. For today, let me give you just a few highlights. As you saw in the last slide, there are several engine models at varying levels of depth, speed, and cost. We decided to use the newest and strongest for our work. That's Text Da Vinci 002. Temperature settings tell the model how creative to be, how far to go in finding completions. Zero for the least risky and one for the most. We usually set the temperature at around 0.5 or 6. Tokens are the units of analysis and payment the GPT-3 uses. Roughly four characters per token, though it's a bit more complicated than that. There are several other parameters that can be set, like stop sequences and start text. We've experimented with them, but decided to keep it simple for now. At base, using GPT-3 is about prompts and responses. You feed something, a set of characters actually, in, the engine does its thing and returns something. There are ways to get more accuracy by giving structured examples of what you want back in response, but we decided not to do that for now. I've spent lots and lots of time over the past year and a half playing with OpenAI GPT-3. While doing that, I've learned a few things that are important to always keep front of mind when trying to use GPT-3 for serious work. First, it's not predictable. In Wolfram, we're used to algorithms and reproducibility, unless we're using neural net models, for example. With GPT-3, it can be frustrating. Just when you think you've got it nailed, you get an off-the-wall response. Second, you can't trust it. Sometimes it makes up facts, sources, answers. They're often logical, but wrong. And third, it can be lazy. It gets into a rut and repeats answers rather than reaching more broadly and more deeply into its knowledge store. These three little hitches make it even more important that humans real humans be involved in looking at all stages of the process and checking GPT-3's work. For our projects, we use GPT-3 as a starting point and it saves us time. But heavy, old-fashioned fact-checking and editing need to happen before any output is ready to publish. That's what our third partner, Connect, does. Two years ago, Daniel Bigham wrote a long, very well-documented post in the Wolfram Community Posts, and it provided the code for using the OpenAI GPT-3 API within Wolfram. I'm not going to be able to get into all the detail and explanation he did in his post, but what I'll say is that it's must reading for anyone wanting to use this. You'll see that the URL is on the slide. We updated and simplified his code a bit 
to make it a shorter defined function for getting the API calls into the Wolfram coding flow. Basically, you set the path to GPT-3, include your secret key identification, and the parameter values you want to use. You assemble this into the right format and do a send. You get a response back. That's it. The function works like any other function in Wolfram and can be altered by Wolfram code, stored, tracked, etc. Before I get into our specific project and coding, here are a few things to keep in mind as I explain what we are doing in our work. First of all, OpenAI GPT-3 has size constraints. In the DaVinci engine we're using, there is a maximum number of tokens that can be processed, around 4,000. This includes both the prompt and the response. How to approach this is different in the playground and in Wolfram. In the playground, you can have a dialogue going back and forth with the engine, fine tuning and directing it based on its response, using shorter prompts and adapting them as you wish. This is human to machine communication. In Wolfram, using the API, you have to get everything you're going to prompt into one batch send. This includes any text you want summarized as well as what you want the engine to do with it. For us, much of the text we want to feed into GPT-3 is longer than the token max. Wolfram code excels at chunking and reassembling. We also are able to use tables in Wolfram to make multiple calls and get multiple responses using different prompts, and this helps us to design our prompting sequences. In this part of the presentation, I'll be going through the many ways we work to wrangle the massive amounts of material produced during the United Nations Global Goals Week. A bit of background first. As you likely know, in September of every year, the United Nations General Assembly takes place in New York City. In addition to formal business and world leaders giving speeches, there's major emphasis on what's happening with the SDGs and the Global Goals. Last month, was the first time it was in person again since COVID time. This was exciting for New York City, exciting for all the people who came together again. There were many, many UN sessions and many, many, many conferences and other ancillary activities. We've been covering the event for seven years using various combinations of looking at data and reading reports so that we could write medium articles and do tweets. Lots of looking at videos. Even though the week was in person this year, COVID time meant that there had been virtual sessions in previous years, so the technology and the contempor contemporaneous availability of video recordings has improved lots. That helped us in our work. This is the part I call heavy lifting, the cleaning and the preparation to get things ready for the fun stuff. Ben did most of this with Kinnett and I mostly listening and sharing info for our live tweeting during the week. We saw it as four big steps. First, deciding what to pay attention to. There was lots of discussion among the three of us, based on our current priorities and our long-term goals. As a tool to help, Ben scraped the master schedule and got it into data format and Wolfram to let us do keyword searches, etc. 
The second set step was the actual capturing. We captured audio for over 100 sessions, some as they happened, some after through YouTube, and a few from custom conference sites. We use text recognize and other Wolfram speech recognition functionality often in our regular work, but for this, we decided to use Otter AI, which is best for industrial batching, etc. The last step in this process of getting the raw material together was downloading the text transcripts and getting them into order so that they could be fed into Wolfram for processing through OpenAI GPT-3. Note that we didn't use or do any cleaning of the actual transcript text. Neither humans nor Wolfram did that. We wanted to put GPT-3 through its paces. We wanted to make a summary article in Medium for each of the 100 plus sessions using the transcripts. That was our goal. We decided that for this project, we'd hand roll it through the Wolfram GPT-3 assembly line one document at a time. It's important to note that there's an art, so far human designed, for getting GPT-3 to do what you want. Although we think there are possibilities to use Wolfram for this in the future. Also, because of the token number constraints, it's important to find the right balance between the raw text you're feeding in, the prompts you're putting in, and the necessary room for getting the response back all within that 4,000 token limit. In the next slides, I'll take you through the code that we've used. It's not fancy or elegant code, no nesting or big complex one-liners, but it's fairly self-documenting and is fast enough for our current needs. For this part of the overall process, Wolfram does more of the heavy lifting, the chunking, the API calling, and the assembling. The next four slides are code slides. The actual code is on the left and the comments are on the right. I forget this, so first make sure that you have the APL call function open and active. I'm using variable names rather than mapping functions to make the code clearer. For this project, we're using text sentence chunking though we have other code that partitions by character length for other kinds of documents. To call the right amounts and places for the text sentences, we take a 10 set sentence chunk at the beginning and a 10 sentence chunk at the end to make sure we're getting the whole picture gist. In the middle, the size is variable depending on how big the raw text is. In this case, we're taking every fourth sentence, though it could be fewer or more depending on the size of the raw text. You could also use offset to start and step through differently. There are six API calls altogether that are sent in one long sequence, although called one at a time. OpenAI completions is the name of the Daniel Bigham function. We're using DaVinci 2 as our engine, but it's hard coded into the function so you don't see it each time. The first three API calls, title, speakers, and TLDR summary are sort of header calls, sort of metadata. The format for each of them is the same. Each one is a string join that brings together the joint text we made in the last slide code with a direction to complete and it's all put into one prompt. 
notice that the size of the token number is different in each one depending on what outcome we're looking for. A note on this, I did a good amount of testing both through Wolfram and in Playground to figure out how to structure the prompt directions to get closer to the desired response. At the moment we're keeping temperature at the same, 0.6, though we'll likely test it more to fine tune for this kind of more specific response. These second three API calls are more expansive, letting GPT-3 have more tokens to give longer responses. Again, temperature is kept the same. Highlights is a longer summary of what this transcript contains with the highlights chosen by GPT-3. It tends to be pretty good, though you can get fairly different results on different runs using the same prompts. We wanted our summaries to be action-oriented, so we leaned toward opportunities and potential actions. For us, this worked well. This is the code for assembling the results of the six API calls into one document with headings. It's fairly primitive, but lets us get a sense of what's there so we can run it again if it's way off base. Medium, where this response is going, has its own formatting idiosyncrasies, so it doesn't pay to do too much formatting in Wolfram. Just to note, the whole code on the last four slides is run at once, with the imported text being the only variable in run to run. Also, Using a table wrapper lets us run through the whole code multiple times to see if we're getting good results for our needs. We save the text through a straight Wolfram export. We estimate that this is a real time saver for us, unless GPT-3 has gone rogue, which we usually catch earlier. We can edit and fix the document in 15 to 45 minutes within Medium. This is hours less than it would take us to do without using tech. The summaries aren't deep or journalistically excellent, but they work well for someone who wants to get to the core of what was said over an hour of video without watching or listening to the whole thing. Wolfram is definitely the orchestrator for this project. And we humans get to do more work at our human value-added level. Though Wolfram and GPT-3 may one day be able to do everything we humans are doing here, we're not expendable yet, and I don't think we'll ever be. Ben, Kinnett, and I have a very long list of things we want to try next. It's likely to keep us busy for a long time. What we found is this Wolfram, OpenAI, Outside Tools, and Human four-way partnership has endless possibilities. We'll include links to some of the output of this project in hard copy of the presentation when it's posted. Thank you. I'm not sure if there's time for questions, but I can get on Skype or phone later with you and Ben if you have any.